some of uh, um, my role models, uh, when they talk about engineering manager, uh, management, they talk about herding cats. And there is this quote that I quite agree with, that a man who carries a cat by the tail learns something that he can learn in no other way. Uh, this is quite true for an engineering manager and it also described my journey since I joined PaySafe about three years ago when I found uh, myself managing a um, mobile team and aiming to grow it to a large and effective mobile area. Uh, I come from engineering background and various uh, leadership position, but I back in the time I knew nothing about mobile and the first thing I learned was that the mobile teams are often described as special kind of snowflakes, but that was not in the most complimentary way. On the other side, mobile engineers often few like the rest of the organization doesn't quite understand them. And while there are particular challenges about mobile development to which uh, justify uh, all of this, and there is quite a wisdom uh, over the internet that would give you sil silver bullets like React Native or product spots, I'm not going to to talk about any of these today. Uh, I'm just going to share with, with you how we built our values and how we created our culture within the mobile teams. Uh, in my previous uh, life, I've, uh, I was a uh, free and open source uh, software supporter. So one thing that, that I greatly believe uh, in is that um, great software is built by great teams with a solid culture. And building and retaining such a culture requires community. Regardless if your teams are special kind of, kind of snowflakes, the sense of community is what makes the difference. For an organization, a team uh, is said to be great if it's predictable. This means regular release cadence and solid, uh, solid velocity expectations, so the management knows when things are going to get shipped. And predictab uh, predictability in software development means uh, ship constantly as many times a day as you can, and if you break something, just throw back. But this does not work for uh, mobile and definitely didn't work for us uh, because the challenges we have on mobile is that we ship compiled code for other people's phones. And after waiting of hours or even days for the App Store uh, review and approval, people will decide themselves whether and if at all they will install uh, the update. And when I started, uh, we never knew when we are going to release a new version. Engineers were working on features that need to be aligned. Product managers were taking um, decisions about the release based on uh, the their product requirements. And uh, some features get delayed just for one more uh, change in the product requirement or one more change, they delayed others. Out of the sudden, we needed to fix a production issue uh, and postpone everything else, and it was a complete mess. And predictable release cycle is the core of a healthy team and your only way to build a culture around your team. So I needed to figure out how we can uh, commit to a release train because it is a really difficult uh, journey when you haven't shifted your habits. And uh, it is very easy to break the rules and actually undermine them. This required uh, me to play the back cop uh, to everyone, uh, the engineers, the product manager, uh, my manager, uh, other engineers. So uh, I, I was the bad cop and I needed to take a few hard decisions about the ownership of the, of the release. It all started with having me approving everything. 
just have for the route. Uh, I don't think it's not ready. We'll just go with the release and we didn't care that it will go in the next one. Uh, over the time, we managed to pass it um, to the teams uh, going into rotation for the ownership. And later on, we even picked a team that is currently owning it. But uh, our uh, work on the release and owning kit uh, changed the things from uh, fighting uh, from me as a manager to doing it together as a group uh, and being a joint effort that uh, uh, whatever we are shipping uh, every second uh, Wednesday, it should be deployed to the store. Up until we committed to the release train, uh, no one felt like we are doing a release together. It was my feature against your feature. It was me uh, that needs to release something and you that you are blocking me with a pending fix. We never really had a true feedback to uh, each other, uh, never truly really talk about changes we deliver, the overall picture of the app and how uh, the use cases will, will work all together. And uh, this change with uh, doing the release together and another thing that uh, I did is that I started running a shared uh, sprint demo for all the engineers. Over uh, all this time, the demo evolved uh, multiple times. At the beginning, we were just sharing presentations uh, of the new features uh, and showing the use cases. Uh, then we had the involvement from our customer service department asking questions and giving feedback. More recently, we started adding more and more content like uh, sharing future initiatives we're going to do, sharing product metrics, quality metrics, engineering updates. Even we have updates from our UX team that concerns mobile. And I strongly believe that building a team uh, requires that we create a, a return and regular releases and demos uh, did, did, uh, did this for me. Uh, today, the teams are owning both of them and the facilitation of both of, of them. And I know that uh, even if managers are uh, missing or uh, POs are not involved in that, uh, all we will have the release and the demo will deliver a true value around um, UI consistency, minor tweaks that we may find potential ideas for uh, improvement. And um, this tool create the foundation for the connection between the teams. But uh, at some point, they also created opportunity for conflict because the more feedback we give, the more we expect to, uh, from others to act upon this feedback. And the best way to get two teams to find is to give them conflicting incentives. If you incentivize one team to ship as many features as fast as they can, and another team to maintain zero crashes, if you are a monster, you can take the popcorn and uh, have a really great show. Similarly, uh, in my situation, we incentivized the one team to move metrics around user acquisition and engagement and another team to maintain sustainable execution. And this could have easily become a more like a war and less like a functional work environment. So my focus quickly moved uh, to building common values in regard to our engineering standards in our teams. Uh, our common processes, uh, quality standards, uh, expectations for the app stability, and of course, the expectations for the delivery of any team. And um, many years ago, I started my career as engineer in, uh, if I can say it, the best team I may have dreamed for. And this team um, taught me that um, uh, how to how to do the uh, things the right way and the right things uh, and also encourage me to always become better and the biggest thing that I learned is that you can't make someone hold themselves accountable but you can encourage accountability within the team one very powerful tool for peer accountability 
good that you. This is the place where people can each other's work, ask hard questions and give feedback. Uh, however, as the team grow and you, uh, you are uh, expanding it, accountability needs to also expand outside the, the code review. And encouraging it requires creating non-judgmental space where people can open up. They won't be uh, afraid uh, to share ideas uh, and uh, will never feel, uh, feel uh, a sense of a blame uh, that something has not gone uh, uh, as planned or they have a problem to solve. Regardless what your team is and um, how much uh, you try to encourage uh, openness and collaboration as they did, at some point engineers are going to get a bit wild. Especially in mobile, what I found out that is that there is no way for one team's architectural decision to not affect the rest of the people working on, on the app. And there was no way one product feature to be isolated from the rest of the UX uh, experience. Or even a crash, it is a burden for everyone. So uh, even, I, uh, even uh, though I facilitated the communication of uh, feedback, uh, it became overwhelming and it was very easy to fall uh, the slippery slope and turn normal situation into a PR wall or a hostile conversation uh, uh, about a coding problem. And uh, one of the th things that I strongly believe in are style guides and best practices. And I strongly believe that we should have them written. Uh, because you know the main purpose of style guides and uh, best practices is that we have them so we never need to discuss something again. And um, another thing that I strongly believe is that nothing is more motivating for engineers than just feeling the pain. So uh, as a, a reaction to uh one or two PR wars and a hostile conversation uh, when engineers stepped on their toys uh, when writing a code in the same screens or, or, or having dependent features. I just pushed them hard to create their own style guides, uh, to write their own uh, best practices uh, and be aligned around to this. So they needed to, to create their common language uh, that they are going to use. And uh, currently, as a result, we have various style guides, architectural ones, coding standards, uh, linting, the testing practices, processes, and so on. All of these were composed as joint effort by the engineers without um, involvement from the management, um, other than what I mentioned, my push uh, for them to create them. And uh, these style guides currently evolve based on our experiences, what we learn uh, in our um, work, what gaps we find. And um, starting with uh, this uh, situation of uh, a potential conflict that we resolved with uh, uh, multiple meetings of collaboration, iteration over our ideas and trying to, to reach common ag ag agreement, giving compromises and uh, agreeing on, uh, on best practices, some industry standards, or disagreeing with some of them, uh, we created a success story uh, of collaboration. Uh, and uh, as a result, some of the most uh, senior engineers uh, started to gather uh, others in regular meetings for discussing such common topics uh, around the issues we tackle together or issues that arise and trying to collaborate jointly how we are going to uh, resolve this or uh, arise ideas for potential improvements over some burdens they notice. So out of these community meetings, uh, uh, engineers started to, to rise uh, ideas and they started to, to shift uh, some of their uh, focus in generating thoughts for the future. Uh, the truth is that uh, every software and 
location. So the app Pedatic architecture, everyone is going to pay for that every day. If you have a uh, foundation code that is a mess, it will bleed through your entire application and through any new feature that you develop. And uh, if you invest in a thing that makes someone more productive, it is probably going to make everyone from your team more productive. Normally, uh, engineers find it hard to uh, explain such um, uh, such things to product and business. They they used to arise them as problems that they need maintenance time for. So um, product and the product and business are not happy about this. And uh, at the other hand, these things can be strategic for your app, for the technology stack, and the team productivity. And I uh, truly be, uh, believe that um, engineers uh, try to unite against a con common enemy. And normally their co common enemies are technical debt, productivity issues, and uh, process burners. Uh, and as a manager, I can be one of their enemy or I can be their greatest supporter uh, for tackling their enemies. So my strategy throughout the process of creating the communities and uh, our uh, guidelines uh, and our thoughts for the future has always been to push them to generate ideas and to challenge them uh, what they would like to change and what they need uh, in order to feel more, more successful. And the more, the more I challenge, the more they share. So out of that, today, uh, I can say that we have introduced, uh, together significant improvements in our tools. We completely changed our CI systems. We changed our testing strategy. We automated a bunch, bunch of manual stuff that we do repeatedly, not only tests, uh, all kinds of manual uh, stuff. Uh, we work together on improving our uh, onboarding uh, process for new members of the teams, making it more from engineers to engineers. We maintain backlog for stuff that would welcome better new people on board, and we even built together a successful internship program. Uh, what we are most proud of today is that we have a solid technical roadmap uh, about our architectural improvements in the app and our technologies uh, within the uh, both applications. And this roadmap is supported and funded by the business. So, what I can say is that the more we work, the more work we have to do. We have uh, uh, not solved all, all of our issues, but we have grown. Today we are nine teams. We have uh, uh, a goal to grow even more. And uh, out of this journey, I can confirm that engineering management, especially in mobile teams, is like herding cat, uh, cats. Uh, and the best thing actually a manager can do uh, is to let uh, the engineers arise ideas, try them and fight for them. Uh, this is the opportunity that strengthens uh, a team's culture and um, it turns uh, a team from a team to a community that shares common values and incentives. And as it's proven from the open source world, great communities build great uh, software and they know how they want to uh, grow in the future. So thank you. Uh, I hope that you found something to take home and would love to connect. Mm -hmm.